This is the fifth, uh, fifth and final uh, article in our front five. This is from South Africa Rugby Mag, and the headline is uh, Subtle Razzi Spotlights Red Ref Again. What a pathetic response from Razzi Erasmus. Um, you know, uh, and I come from a position where when, when they won the World Cup, I thought this guy was really, really good, honest, you know, comes across well, what have you. But, you know, what an absolute idiot. Um, he's been disrespectful, not just to, to the game, but to, to the vast majority. And, I, you know, I would say the vast majority of, of Springbok uh, supporters. Um, I, as, as you know, I was over in, in Dublin last, last weekend to watch the, the box match. Um, I spoke to a shed load of, of South African supporters in various locations, in, uh, in the game, in pubs before then, pubs afterwards, and what have you. None of, the, none of them were as anal or expressed any uh, thoughts that were along the lines of what Razi Erasmus is, is trying to uh, portray. Um, it's just absolute rubbish. Um, if you want to criticize a ref, well, have a chat with the ref. And I, you know that there are protocols for this. It's not as if you can't raise these issues. It's almost as if he's trying to uh, coerce refs into yep. favoring South Africa whenever they play. Well, hello, humans don't like being told that they're wrong. So the, the, the reaction from the ref is going to be, oh, really? Well, I'm going to smack you now, mm -hmm. hypothetically speaking. Uh, but, but, but the commentary and the way that he's doing it, this, he, he, I don't know if he thinks he's being subtle about it because, uh, you know, the, the, the way of the manner he's putting it across, but he's just being absolutely sarcastic and it's insulting. Um, but actually, the, the people I blame most about this is not Razi Erasmus, it's not the South African Rugby Union Board, or whatever they call it, South African uh, Rugby Union, it's World Rugby. World Rugby should just ban this guy. You know, they've already banned him, and now he's taken the mick, absolutely taken the mick out yep. of World Rugby, publicly, and the Refereeing uh, Association. You know, it's ridiculous. Just get him banned. Yeah. And, you know, and, and all this rap on, 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 on social media with his bloody dancing and getting drunk. And I mean, really? What kind of, you know, and, and, and people still, still support him? If I was a South African fan, I'd be seriously embarrassed. Mm. Seriously and the, embarrassed and, and the reaction, there is starting to be reaction that way as well. Um, it's not prevalent. They, he's still got a lot of backers uh, yeah. today looking at the Twitter, but uh, no, it's it. I mean, the, the, the key word there, um, I'm going to use it forcefully. You used it right. You you held back a bit saying possibly course. I'm going to say this is referee coercion. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's for an audience of just the referees. He's trying to influence the referees before uh, before the next match and that that that's wrong it's not his place to be doing these things in my opinion and um you know like everyone knows everyone who knows the game of rugby in particular of all sports it's such a complicated game you cannot just take one clip and 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 imply that the way the game went was down to this one clip that's the the, the only clip that tells you the story of the game is the full 80 minutes mm. the full context you see one incident. What if the same incident happened the other way? Did the ref give the same result? Is the ref being consistent? You can't just look at one incident and say that turned a match. It is absolutely impossible. But I don't even need to say this because Razzi knows this. So why else is he doing it? He's, he's doing it to, and it's when he does it as well. It's always after a loss. He did it after the first test in the Lions. And, and that was in, in, in that case, he was playing the same opposition the following week. Yes. Which, which was totally, it was influencing the series as well. He knows what he's doing. And like you say, he's been banned once and he's still doing it. So what, what other recourse do they have yes. but, to, but to stop him again? So hopefully, hopefully he gets a message. I don't know if he will. It's not looking that way. But um, you, you just feel like you say, world rugby, it, it's up to them to, to step in and take some Absolutely. Yeah, please. What, can, what sympathy can you have for him or for South Africa after a loss like this? Because we had one of the great spectacles. I've said it a few times on my Twitter and different things. And like last weekend was one of the best weekends of rugby we've seen in a while. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like we had two good World Cup semifinals. We had crack and slaty games across the board in the Autumn Nation series. This week, a little bit more dull. You know, we'll, we'll touch on that with the Ireland game. And then this game, a proper spectacle. I know 
I know Leinster fans might be too happy with the, the thoughts in Marseille, but like the place was absolutely rocking. I, I watched it thinking this is going to be class for a World Cup semi final. It's going to be unreal. We love Stade France, but this place is going to be class. The game was unreal. There was two clear red cards. I, and good thing he didn't come out saying that one wasn't because I think that would have been the tether that really kicked everything off. I think it becomes proper mainstream if that happens. But there were two red cards. There was some great tries, some great hits. I think Barnes did really, really well. And for anyone who was watching, it sounded like he even managed to fix his microphone at halftime without anyone even noticing. So he, <laughs> he did really, really well. But like, there's no conspiracy against South Africa. Like Wayne Barnes is a he's a big boy. He's got 101 tests under his name now. He's not going to care. But if that's um the young Georgian ref, Nika Amsha Kelly, if that's someone young like that, if it's that's Holly Davidson with a great final, like at what point does rugby draw the line? And I've been critical of world rugby, the same as yourself, Richard, where world rugby consistently put out this message of we are going to clamp down but only to a degree. So we see it with high, we see it with head high contacts, yeah, eight week ban, but we're going to cut it by 50%. And I know there's legal frameworks there, but let's start making those eight weeks into 10 weeks. So there's a bit more, do you know what I mean? And let's, let's try and push things out and be more critical. These are, you know, Razzie's what, maybe 60 years of age, Peter Steph de Toys are 27, 28. These are grown men. These people like players, attitudes need to change probably talk about the red card in the other game, player attitude needs to change and head coaches attitudes need to change, be it Fern Cotter or on a way different scale, Razi Erasmus. He shouldn't get away with this. I think this should be the moment. And this is for World Rugby, I think, and this is probably expecting too much of them. There has to be something this week. Mm. This is it. Quick. Like he, yeah. He's had yeah. two weeks. He criticised Dan Sheehan kicking the ball out of a rock while he's been dragged by the neck, which is some cheek, mm. and whatever pun is there. But like, this is two weeks in a row. There was multiple tweets this time, not just one, multiple. Mm. World Rugby have to come out and make a statement. They have to do it. They have to do it this week because if he goes into that Italy game and they win, he's not going to say anything. Mm-hmm. So do it now. Yeah, it's like he's daring them almost to do it so they yeah. should, should really do it.